To solve an optimization problem with linear constraints and linear objective function, introduce slack variables to turn the constraint inequalities into equalities, rewrite the objective function as an equation in standard form, produce the initial tableau where the slack variables and objective function are the basic variables and the rest are free. Now work with the tableau as follows. The entering variable is the variable with the most negative coefficient in the row corresponding to the objective function, the L row. The pivot row is the row with the least non-negative quotient of the constant and the coefficients of the entering variable. The exiting variable is the basic variable in the pivot row. We'll row reduce on the pivot row using the entering variable as the pivot, and then lather, rinse, repeat. The algorithm terminates when all coefficients in the L row are non-negative. So, for example, suppose a table costs $100 in materials and $250 in labor, while a chair costs $50 in materials and $70 in labor. If a table makes $25 in profit and a chair makes $10 in profit, and there's $3,000 available for materials and $5,500 available for labor, how many tables and chairs should be produced to maximize profit? We'll let x be the number of tables and y the number of chairs. If we make x tables and y chairs, then the profit will be the materials cost will be, and the labor cost will be. Now we want to maximize the profit subject to the constraints that the materials cost less than or equal to 3,000 and the labor is less than or equal to 5,500. And so we're trying to maximize a linear objective function over a set of linear constraints. So adding slack variables and our objective function give us and that produces our initial tableau where x and y are the free variables. So the x coefficient in the L row is the most negative, so x is our entering variable. The quotients of the constants and the coefficients of the entering variable are so we'll pivot on the second row on the x entry, making c2 our exiting variable. Row reducing gives us and note that for convenience we're not going to try and get the pivot entries all the way down to 1 because that would introduce a mess of fractions and it wouldn't make a difference in our solution. So now y has the most negative coefficient, so y will be the entering variable and no longer a free variable. The row quotients are, so we'll pivot on the first row, making c1 our exiting variable and now a free variable. So again, row reducing gives us, and again, we're not going to bother to make the pivots equal to 1. Since all entries in the L row are non-negative, no further increase in L is possible, giving us the optimal solution. Setting the free variables to zero give us, and since we can't have a fractional number of chairs, we'll round these to, and so the company should make 12 tables and 36 chairs. Or should it? Now, if they actually do make 12 tables and 36 chairs, their total materials cost will be, and their total labor cost will be, but this puts them over budget. And it's important to remember, the solution must be in the feasible region. So now, we know the point 11.82, 36.4, and so on is inside the feasible region it's actually one vertex of the feasible region. This means there are four nearby points with integer coordinates. While at least one must be outside the feasible region, this means that as many as three of these points could be inside. So first, we'll check to see which ones are inside the feasible region. Remember, a point is inside the feasible region if it satisfies the inequalities. So at 11.36, 
we can check to see if our point satisfies the inequalities, and we find it does, and so this point is inside the feasible region. At 1236, we can check the inequalities, and we find that it fails the second inequality, so this point is not inside the feasible region. At 1237, we find, and this one actually fails both inequalities, so it's definitely not in the feasible region. And finally, the point 1137 satisfies both inequalities, so this is also inside the feasible region. And so now we can check the value of our objective function. At 1136, and at 1137, and so the company should make 11 tables and 37 chairs which will cost 29.50 in materials and 53.40 in labor, yielding a profit of 645. And note that the actual solution is not obtained by rounding our solution in any conventional way. We had to identify the nearby points and then determine which ones were inside the feasible region, then evaluate the objective function at the points inside the feasible region, and then select which point gave us the greatest value of the objective function.